Okay, so welcome. So today I'm gonna to talk about my setup. I'm primarily gonna take you through the various hardware gadgets you can see here on my desk. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the internal software tools that I use to trade sports and a bit of cryptocurrency. So let's get to it. Okay, so my go-to weapon of choice with regards to trading software is a program called a Geek's Toy. There's many trading softwares out there, but haven't been doing this for a while now. I can comfortably say this is the best one. It's all about personal preference at the end of the day, but this software just has such a user-friendly interface. It's highly customizable and cheap. So this is the main menu right here, and as you can see, there's many sports available with live exchange markets to trade. I specialize in horse racing. I also do cricket and golf, but less frequently. So if we look at the right hand side, we can see this ladder interface. This basically is the whole advantage of having a trading software. This is a horse race and right now I'm looking at the live price action on the top eight horses in the race. The purpose of these price ladders is to give maximum depth of the price action, which you just can't get on the Betfair interface. And we can also use one click staking without the time lag that you would have when using Betfair. So these pink columns on the left make up the lay money. The blue columns on the right is the back money and the column down the middle, these flashing numbers here, are the live current market prices. The aim is to lay low and back high or buy low and sell high, just like you would in the stock market. Speaking of which, we have a range of charting options available, just like you would in the financial markets such as candlesticks, weighted moving average, MACD, etc. Personally, I just keep the trading volume chart open so I can see if any big stakes enter the market. Finally, my most important chart for pre-race trading is the market overview here on the left. So it's just a basic line graph showing how the price of all runners in the race respond to each other. I set my chart range to 300 seconds or 5 minutes, which is an appropriate time frame for me given how long I spend in a trade. And I set my sample rate to 0.25 seconds. So this setup gives me a pretty accurate picture for me to forecast my trades. Okay, so the next bit of software I use is a program called Flashback Pro. This is a handy screen recording program which I use for recording and analyzing my trades so I can teach my techniques to my students via the video pack. And last but not least is Adobe Premiere Pro, which is how I make these YouTube videos. This is an extremely powerful software of which I probably don't even use 10%. I'm learning on the job, so Hopefully as this channel grows, the quality of these videos mature as well. Okay, so that covers the software. Now we'll move on to the hardware and we'll start with the elephant in the room, my 49 inch curved monitor by a brand called Electric, I think it's pronounced. The full name's a bit of a mouthful, so I'll leave it in the description below. Now I used to have a dual monitor setup, but the standing arm is a bit clunky. There's a lot of wires and it's just not that practical. So I figured the solution would be to get this one huge monitor. Not only is it tidier, but it makes the desk space look a lot more aesthetic, which is essential if I'm going to flex on YouTube. Now when I first got it, it seemed really overwhelming, but after about 5 or 10 minutes, I got used to it. So even though my dual monitor took up more space, this one screen is actually the equivalent of having three 22 inch monitors. So on those rare occasions where I have nothing to do, I can play video games or stream videos or music next to my work screen. So at the time of recording this, I've had this monitor for about a month, so it's difficult to comment on its durability, but in terms of quality, practicality and aesthetic, it ticks all the boxes. And when you factor in the price, which is around half of what you might pay for say an LG or Samsung model, it's an absolute steal. So even though I bought this huge monitor, I'm thinking about stacking another one on top because, well, you can never have enough screen space. In the meantime, I have this Acer Swift laptop, which I bought this time last year before I went to Dubai. So trading off a laptop is not ideal for fast paced action like racing as the pad can get fiddly, but for slow paced action like test cricket, it's perfect. So when I travel abroad, I make sure to do so during the down period on the racing which is when the cricket kicks off, usually around December, January time, which works perfectly for me, given the unsocial hours and weather in the UK. Uh, besides, there's nothing more boring than watching 22 mile jump races a day without liquidity. Okay, so next we've got my Snowball Ice microphone by a brand called Blue. So I use this to record audio for my demo videos for my students and to converse with students on my live streams. The sound quality is first class and it's just light years ahead of built-in microphones. 
Not to mention it's got this stylish retro aesthetic look going on, which looks great on my desk. Okay, so what's next? Uh, oh yes, my speakers. So these are my Logitech X207 speakers. So I was in two minds about getting a subwoofer, but given I already have limited desk space and I only watch movies on the TV for which I already have a great sound system, uh, I found a great reason to excuse myself. Again, like the rest of the hardware so far, it's great value for money, doesn't take up an awful lot of space, and they're Bluetooth, so less wires. Okay, so now onto my gaming tower down here. This is a pre-built one by HP. It's the Pavilion model. It has an Intel i5 processor and an Nvidia graphics card and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So these are built to handle high-end gaming, which I don't do. So there's more than enough juice in this thing to run my trading and video editing software simultaneously, which is about as heavy as my workload gets at any given time. So I've wanted a gaming PC for a long time and I made a big mistake of not getting one earlier since the prices have just rocketed in the last year. Apparently there's a worldwide shortage of computer chips and silicon. I mean there's some graphics cards out there which cost more than my entire machine. So if you're looking for a gaming PC, ideally get one soon and if you're tech savvy unlike myself, then build one yourself and you'll save a good few hundred quid. Next is my desk. Now this is about as budget as a desk you can get. I picked it up from Ikea as I was in a rush and it was the smallest one that would fit in my car. Now those with a keen eye would have noticed the drawers aren't even and I could promise it's not my fault. Bad instruction manual. The brackets are evenly spaced but since the drawers are all different sizes, I was left with one drawer which doesn't fit into any of the slots. Okay, last but not least is my chair. I got this off Amazon a few years ago. It's faux leather, it's got this wine slash dark chocolate colour which I was fond of. Um, I've actually taken off the wheels because I fidget a lot when I'm sitting idly for hours. So after a near death experience, I decided to remove the wheels to try and curb the habit. So other than horse racing, most online live streams for sports have a time lag. So how do I get around that? <laughs> well, I'm so glad you asked. If I turn the camera around here, you'll see my 55 inch 4K ultra smart TV, which is connected to my skybox. Now, of course, there's no way of getting this next to my workspace. So I have to turn around a lot, as you can imagine, which does give me a good neck workout, which is about as much strength training as I do these days. So uh, there's always a silver lining. Okay, so that's my setup. Now, remember, you don't need none of this stuff to trade profitably. These recent upgrades have come after many years. I started with just a laptop. But if you did like any of the stuff you saw, then I've posted links in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff, and I'll see you soon.